What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest build of Pixel Plus UI official based on Android 12.1 that is actually Android 12 L and I know this is a little older build from when I'm making this video on but this build has been really really amazing. This is the 14th May 2022 build of the Pixel Plus UI and the version is 4.5 over here and let me show you the about section quickly. This is how it looks like of course we have the pixel plus ui logo right there then we have the android version as android 12 it should be showing android 12.1 but for some reason it's still at android 12 and the pixel plus ui version is there again and the device maintainer is of course sort of huge thanks to him for this amazing rom i would say and if you want to donate to the developer you can check the links from the description or the details of it then the security patch here is latest of May 5th, 2022 and the stock kernel here is the Excalibur Plus kernel. The AC Linux status shows as enforcing. In the system section, this is quite filled I would say and we have the updater and of course you can check for updates from this system updater and of course if you want to flash this particular ROM you can definitely check out the links in the description or the cards. And this Pixel Plus UI logo in the system updater looks awesome I would say. Let me go back, we have the gestures right here. We have the quick tap action that is the back tap and we have the quickly open camera and stuff. Then we have the system nav gestures and in the edge gesture settings we have the edge long swipe action you can actually customize that. The gesture indicator you can also hide it if you want to. Then we have the swipe to invoke assistant. Then the right edge left edge customization and also the pill length and the edge touch area you can actually customize. The full screen gestures are there too. Let me go back we have the two button and three button navigations as well if you want to use them we also have the invert layout option for both and we have the one handed mode so that is actually working fine if you're noticing and we also have the swipe to take screenshot so that should be working fine again we have the edit and share option right there you can go into edit and you have the google's markup option and with that let me actually show you you can just mark some stuff if you want to just like this so yeah, this is gonna be really handy for something like if you want to mark something quickly. But yeah, I just made a mess out of it. So yeah, let me just delete it. We have the prevent ringing option right here on the bottom. Then we have the button settings here. We have the system navigation gestures again. And in here we have the edge long swipe action. Then we have the press and hold power button action. We have the advanced restart option and hold for assistant and stuff. And we have the end call option, then the long press power button toggle torch and the automatically turn off torch option is there too. We have even more button settings. Let me go back to the status bar here. We have the network traffic indicator, but I use a separate app for this, but you can of course use it on the status bar if you want to. Then the system icons, of course, there is the headset and the Bluetooth and stuff, etc. icons. You can enable or disable them however you like it to be. And the double tap to sleep is there on the status bar. Also the clock position you can change to right or left. And then we have the show seconds option, then the AM PM style changing option. The battery status style, you can actually change it to icon portrait or circle, then the battery percentage. You can change it to inside the icon or next to the icon. Of course, I use it with next to the icon one. And the brightness control option is there. So you can just, so as you can see right now, it's working fine. And then we have the quick pull down option too. So right or left, you can choose it to be. And now let me show you the home screen. This is how it looks like. And of course, as this is a Pixel Plus UI, we have the like Pixel Launcher over here by default. And if you go into the settings, this is how it looks like. Of course, you can disable the stations, but there is no double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen on this stock launcher at least. And to the left side of the home screen, we have the Google's Discover page and they should be working fine. As you can see, scrolling through them is perfectly fine. And swiping down anywhere in the home screen gets you to the quick setting panel and if you swipe up you get the app drawer of course and in here we have the widgets working perfectly fine and if you're noticing the animations actually this is android 12 l animations and they are working perfectly fine here and all the widgets that you will be adding should be working fine now let's talk about the stock camera well this is the stock camera that you get of course this is a next camera present by default here and if you switch to portrait mode and stuff, as you can see, it's working fine. Even for the front camera, the portrait mode should be working fine again. So you shouldn't be having any issues with the like portrait pictures and stuff. Takes a little bit of time on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, of course, to click a picture. And if I go into the info, as you can see, this is a 13.2 megapixel photo. So yeah, the portrait pictures, the details are fine. They should be working perfectly great. Let me go back in the video settings. For the front camera, you have 1080p 30fps up to option. And if you go to the back camera, 
you have the 4K 30 FPS option if you want to use that for some reason. Also, the 1080p 60 FPS option is present. You shouldn't worry about that. And in here, we also have the Pro mode. But let me tell you, on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, still we are getting only the Photo Pro mode. There is no Video Pro mode over here. But we actually get the ANX camera in Android 12 right out of the box. That's awesome for this Pixel Plus UI. Right now let's talk about the quick setting panel and in here we have all these toggles that I have added and you can edit and add even more toggles if you want to. You can just see that how much options are there. I have added the Wi-Fi toggle, the mobile data toggle and stuff and let me tell you that the Vault calling and stuff should be working fine if you are using a GeoSIM. I don't have a SIM card in the device right now so that's why it shows disabled. And in here we have the Bluetooth, the flashlight, the dark theme and the auto rotate night light and the hotspot etc. But let me tell you, in this particular ROM, if you are using the dark theme, there is no pitch black option. Like, I don't actually feel this is pitch black. Let me just increase the brightness. You might be noticing this is like gray in the background. But yes, in this particular ROM, there is no pitch black option. But of course, for the Redmi Note 7 Pro, it doesn't matter because it has an IPS display. The dark theme with even gray background, like grayish, dark grayish background, it's fine, I would say. But yes, I'm just mentioning it because you get that in other rounds. But in here, we don't have that pitch black option. We have the always on display. You can toggle it on or off from right here. The screen recorder is there and you can record the device audio and microphone audio with the screen recorder too. As you can see, the Android 12 L animations again are working fine. And in the power menu too, it is working perfectly fine. And if you tap restart, we do have the advanced reboot options and stuff. Let me go back, we have the heads up disabling option, the battery server, the do not disturb, the data saver and the Google home controls are there, then the extra dim feature and the sound toggle is there too. If you tap and hold on it, you get the volume panel and let me actually show you, you can expand the volume panel from here and let me tell you once you connect a Bluetooth headset and stuff, the battery actually shows up, the battery like status actually shows up on the status bar. Now let me jump into the settings and in here first, let's talk about the battery. Well, in the battery settings, this is really, really interesting that we have the battery percentage right there and we have the battery saver, then a lot more features like turn on the light when charging and we have the pixel battery stats provider. You can disable it if you want to. Also here we have the battery temperature, the design battery capacity, the current battery capacity and the charging cycle numbers. Yes, it shows nine over here for me because I have replaced the battery. This is the new battery I'm using for the Redmi Note 7 Pro. And with that, I have completed nine cycles. But this feature is not present in most ROMs that we can't really see the charging cycle and stuff. But in this particular ROM, the Pixel Plus UI, I am really, really loving this ROM because of this particular feature. I just love this charging cycle seeing option over here and it works perfectly fine. Now, let me talk about the battery life. Yes, the battery life has been insane, I would say for me. Because as you can see, it shows even more than 10 hours of screen on time for this device. That's just amazing. And in the health section, this is just insane that after changing the battery and after like doing a couple of cycles, like three cycles, it actually shows that my battery health is about 104%, which is just like not possible. But yeah, the battery life over here is just awesome and it's giving me insane battery life. Definitely two days of battery life is possible with this particular ROM right now with the new battery of course. And the fast charging is working fine too. Let me actually show you the charging stats. And here I have, as you can see, it shows screen on charging speed is 1789 MA over here. And it's not that slow, which is showing right here, of course. Let me go back and in the sound and vibration settings in here, we have even more things like the vibration and haptics. Right now my phone is in mute. That's why it's not showing up. And we have the charging sound and vibration option, the touch vibration and the screenshot sound. You can disable it if you want to. In the Mi sound enhancer, of course, you can choose it to youth edition and the sound quality via the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well should be really great. And there is also the bass booster preset over here. No issues whatsoever with the sound quality again. The clear speaker option is there. If your speakers are dusty or sounds muffled, you can use this particular feature. And there is the in-call vibration option. And we have even more things. Let me go back to the display settings. In here, we have the brightness level, the adaptive brightness and stuff. And inside lock screen, we have the privacy controls and stuff, of course. We have the face unlock settings again. Then the skip lock screen option, then the disable media cover art, etc and the double line clock, etc. But let me tell you, there is no force fingerprint option over here as of right now, which was there in the Android 11 version of the Pixel Plus EY, I guess. And in here we have the night light, the live display calibration, and the RGB control you can actually do from right here. Then we have the colors that is says to saturate for me. And we have the notch behavior for some reason, and you can hide the notch if you want to. 
which will look like this. I would say I just use this with the default one and that looks perfectly fine for me. And the double tap to wake and the double tap to sleep both are working fine. I'll show you that. Wake up on plug is there. Then the full screen apps, you can actually choose particular apps to force full screen and the ambient display kind of customizations are there. In the wallpapers and styles, this is how it looks like. Basically, it's pretty much same. And we have the upgrade up to five by five. The themed icons you can enable. Let me go back and inside security in here in the settings, we don't get the quick unlock that is kind of disappointing. But of course we have both the face unlock and the fingerprint option. Let me just set up the face unlock quickly so that I can show you the face unlock speed and stuff in here. In the face unlock settings, we have the wind swiping up on lock screen and the skip lock screen option and stuff. Let me go back. We have the fingerprint option. But let me tell you in here, we don't get any kind of app lock in this particular ROM as of right now which might be disappointing for a lot of users. Even for me, I would say like, I would have loved to see the app lock over here, but the app lock is simply not present in this particular ROM. Right now, let me actually enable the always on display so that I can show you how it looks like on this device. And here, if I double tap on the shooters bar, as you can see, the phone goes to sleep. And of course, this is how the always on display looks like. Like I know some of you guys will not use always on display, but sometimes it flickers if you're noticing if the lighting condition is weird, but yeah. The double tap to wake disables itself when you are using always on display, but let me just like turn with the power button. Then if I double tap over here, still it's not doing anything. So yeah, with the always on display, it might be a little weird, but yes, if you turn off the always on display, it should be perfectly fine. Let me actually show you from the lock screen. As you can see right now, I have turned off and as you can see, double tap to wake is right now working perfectly fine. Even the double tap to sleep, both are working perfectly fine here. So right now, first, let me show you the face unlock speed. So in here, we have to swipe up on the lock screen. Right now, it shows recognizing face. And as you can see, it unlocks. Let me try one more time. I just double tap to wake, swipe up, recognizing face it shows. And as you can see, it has unlocked. So face unlock is working perfectly fine. Now, talking about the fingerprint scanner speed, let me show you. If I tap the fingerprint scanner right here, as you can see, it unlocks. So it's fairly fast, I would say. Let me show you one more time. And as you can see, the face unlock is not a problem. I mean, the fingerprint scanner is not a problem at all. It's working perfectly great. Let me try with this index finger. And as you can see, and the animation, if you're noticing, this is how the animation works. And once you use the power button, there is no Android 12 kind of animation for some reason, like that ripple kind of effect doesn't show up with the power button over here. But yes, with the fingerprint scanner, it actually shows up. But then again, I would have loved to see the app locks over here, but that's just not present. Now scrolling through the UI is pretty fine, I would say, and it's normal. It's like pretty fluid overall, all over the UI and the performance and benchmarks. If you want to see here are the Android and Geekbench score on this particular ROM. And you can see the performance benchmarks are really good. No issues whatsoever with the performance. I would say, depending on like whatever device you are switching from, like if you are a Redmi Note 7 Pro user, you will find it pretty good. But if you are someone who is using a like much, much better device, of course, if you switch from 120 hertz display to this device, you will definitely see lags and stutters everywhere. So yeah, that's how it is. But for normal user, it's fine if you are a Redmi Note 7 Pro user. And in the recent panel, this is how it looks like. We do have the split top option and stuff just like this. It works and you can switch between apps just like this with the split top. And once you go home and go into the recent panel, both apps stay together. So this feature is working perfectly great here. Now talking about basic things, yes, the IR Blaster should be working great as you can see. And the safety net passes right out of the box on this particular ROM, so you shouldn't worry about banking apps. And the DRM info stays as L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any problems. So that was my review about the Pixel Plus UI based on Android 12.1 on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. I think this is one of the best ROMs from which you can actually get to see the charging cycles and stuff. Also, you get the Anix camera by default, which takes really good pictures and videos as well. So yeah, it is a pretty much daily driver, I would say, for a user who is looking for an Android 12 ROM, which has the Anix camera and stuff and the charging cycle showing option, etc. So this is a very good ROM. You can definitely try it. Of course, you can search for any particular apps really quickly over here. All these things just works perfectly great. So thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD Index signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.